at uh, hello. 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 Hi, sorry. Ah, uh, I like was uh, Viola did there at the back. Can I get a uh, yeah? Yeah. 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 And uh, guys, let's have another battle cry. Got something else? Got something else clever? What? Uh, battle what? cry? Shall what? we say uh, what? Avengers Assemble? Go on, three, two, one. Avengers, Avengers Assemble! Assemble. Yeah. And a special oh hi mark for your costume. I saw you yesterday. You are awesome. Okay, guys, so uh, we are Nerd to Know Media. Um, we run a podcast every Saturday, and you find us on Facebook and Spotify and all these wonderful things that the other two guys know more about, because they do all the hard work. And today, we're going to be doing a panel called Literally Everything is Wrestling. So, full disclosure, I know nothing about wrestling. Uh, in fact, I didn't know I was... Who booed? <laughs> well done, sir. I uh, only have a demon in the audience. Uh, I, in fact, I was telling the guys, I didn't know that I was hosting a panel on wrestling until I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> because that went up before I got the message. Thanks, guys. It was swear, guys. It was swear. <laughs> in fact, on a bad day, I can't even spell wrestling, so I'm really glad it's written up there. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we get started, we'll just introduce ourselves. We are the Nerd to Know Media team. My name is Keanu Calicorn. Introduce yourself there, guys. I'm Daryl Connor. And I'm Brian, uh, Brian O'Rourke. Excellent. And uh, guys, this is going to be an interactive panel, so if you guys want to pip up or throw out a suggestion, we'll cue you in for that. Uh, but first, the concept, as far as I can understand, because I've spent the last set two days running around chasing TARDISes and all this kind of stuff, is that you two believe that you can prove absolutely anything in the world is wrestling. Anything at all. Yes, that is correct. So if we say the poetry of Seamus Heaney or abstract art or Raiding Area 51, that can be, that's somehow connected to wrestling, yes? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. so before we get into the meat of it, I believe do you guys have a setup for us. Well, first things first, guys, who is a wrestling fan here? Show of hands. Okay, cool. That's about half the room. Yep. Good. That's great. That's what we want. So you're going to help us. Yeah. <laughs> but we want people who aren't wrestling fans here as well because, you know, that's how this works. Just me, is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. Just to get everyone. Kian's friends. Yeah. 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 friends. Thank you. <laughs> just to get uh, everyone on side a bit, we do have. Uh, just to get everyone on side a bit, we do actually have a quick introduction. Let's make sure this is. So for everyone who is a wrestling fan, here is an introduction. It hasn't turned off yet because we're not exposing Area 51 here. <laughs> That's okay. Tell you what, while you are setting up, I've got a question for Dara. How yep. long have you been a wrestling fan? Uh, since I was six. Since you were six? Yeah, six or seven. Six or seven. I don't remember time when I was a wrestling fan. Wait, should you have been... Well, I say this as no. a parent. No, no, have you been watching much. wrestling no, six? of course not. This is during <laughs> like, the Federation years into the edge here. Excuse the Federation Yes, alright, so... That's not Star Trek. That's not Star Trek, guys, that's not. This is when WWE was going from kid-friendly into not kid-friendly. So, uh, yeah. Here we go, let's kick it off with the first part. And what about yourself, Brian? Right? Right? Well, it's like... Professional there. wrestling is not, in fact, a real athletic competition. <laughs> but... What a botch. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to swivel this a bit while we handle the technical difficulties. So, if you can multitask... Brian, how did you discover wrestling? Um, through school, mainly. Oh, Jesus, what school did you go to? Because <laughs> uh, all my friends in school, they, uh, they liked it, so I don't think I mean that there. I mean, to be honest, maybe it's a generational thing, but my experience of wrestling is it's the thing you turned off after Pokemon at 7 in the morning was done. <laughs> is anyone else Sky 1 generation know? Woo! Yes! Actually, distinctively, one of my earliest memories of Sky 1 and uh, wrestling on Sky 1 was the Undertaker crucifying uh, Stone Coast Steel. Okay, okay. I know. <laughs> Just to what? clarify, as the wrestling normie, if there's a term he uses, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Crucify? Yeah, literally, on a cross. Yeah, no, he, he, <laughs> he was a satanic priest. On yeah. the Lord's table. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Alright, let's, let's try this again. 
Me, professional wrestling is not, in fact, a real athletic competition. There's no getting around that. Guess I have to end the video here because pro wrestling isn't real. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> but neither is Star Wars or the Avengers or Goku stop people from talking about them far more than they do a lot of real things. And in order to truly appreciate the rhetorical value of pro wrestling, you must treat it as it really is, a work of fiction. But not just any fiction, pro wrestling is one of the last remaining bastions of theater. Playwrights and actors had to craft compelling narrative performances using the limited tools they had. If you boil it down, the genre of theater mostly involves a bunch of weird people in stupid costumes prancing around and over-embellishing an iambic pentameter. Theatrical entertainment doesn't come from what's literally happening on stage. The value of theater comes from filling in the blanks of your imagination. This fundamental principle is otherwise known as the suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief allows us to accept beyond what's literally happening on the screen. It allows us to experience a story and its characters as real, no matter how simple the presentation. This same principle applies to novels, comic books, musical lyrics, cartoons, movies, and yes, professional wrestling. Visual storytelling is an inherently human art form, and people have been performing stories for audiences for thousands of years, dating all the way back to the earliest known auditoriums of ancient Greece where citizens would gather around and listen to an esteemed orator recite the works of Homer. I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, if you want to watch that full video, it's by Emperor Lemon, and it's called There Will Never Be Another, and then that's a series. Yeah. So yeah, it's super fun, and I had to play that clip because it kind of sums up everything. Why everything is wrestling, or everything can go back to wrestling, is because of the way it's built up. It's not a sport, right? It, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's more of a soap opera. I describe wrestling as a soap opera punching, right? Obviously, not taking anything away from the wrestlers who are incredible athletes and all that kind of stuff. But the actual way that the story is told is through tropes. So we have main, major storytelling tropes: the good guy versus the bad guy, um, the hero's journey, whatever. Any any story you can mention, anything that you can mention goes back to wrestling in some way, or has been used in wrestling in some way. Also, when you guys are shouting out stuff, <laughs> if we don't know what it is, give us a quick summary, because that would help. So. I believe that was oi. Is that the summary? <laughs> oi. <laughs> fair. fair. Uh, I say this as someone who has worked in theatre in Dublin for six or seven years now. I have never crucified anyone. That is not yes. a connection. You've never done it yet. Yes, perhaps, yeah. I have carried a cross, but I haven't crucified anyone. Fair. Well, to, be fair, to be fair, though, he, when that was happening, um, they were kind of pushing out what wrestling was as a, sto as a story um, driven product for a while, and that was really getting into soap opera. You know? So, and at the time as well, it was 1999, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 1999, when like everything was being broken and pushed so they were really going hardcore with the offensive imagery or you know what you have seen before that was very much the zeitgeist of that period of that period though was that everything was trying to be in some way striking or offensive it was at a time when Marlon Manson was one of the biggest names in music yeah correct and, and like the, that's what I mean like when you're examining different periods it's a lot easier to get these beats um, in and that's what relates to people, right? A lot of people, not to get too much into it for the non-wrestling fans, but one of the bigger uh, criticisms now with wrestling as a current product is like, oh, I can't relate to it, because you can't, right? It's kind of silly. Um, but when it hits those beats and it hits those big storylines, it really resonates with somebody, and that's that's kind of, if you've never seen wrestling before, that's when it's great. When it's great, it's fantastic. When it's terrible, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, when, when wrestling is at, at the... The high point of what of what you could expect from it, it's any uh, every bit as enjoyable as any uh, any of the Marvel uh, of any of the best Marvel films. Mm. But when it's at its lowest point, you're kind of comparing it more to 
a 14 year old's fan fiction <laughs> that they deleted because it was bad. Yeah, my, you know? my Immortal. So yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah. Actually, Game of Thrones, right? Who's Game of Thrones fan? Yeah. Oh, what? There's still fans. Look at yeah. 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 This is what I mean, right? Like, the, the big thing about Game of Thrones was everybody loved it, it was the best show ever, blah, blah, blah. And then it. You know, it, it ended up getting bad writers, or they ran out good material, and it became just a terrible, terrible, terrible show for a lot of people. I don't think that. Personally, he petted his dog at the end. I was happy, right? Spoilers. So, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of people are like, oh, this is terrible as ever. I'm like, try to be a wrestling fan, you know, you'll get over it. Um, okay, but I, I want to park it for a bit. Brian, pull up the wrestling terms. Because, like, yes. again, we're going to use a lot of, when we get into this, we're going to use this a lot of This is mostly for my benefit. This I, is for everyone who isn't a wrestling fan benefit. Yeah. We can't control ourselves. If you've all got sandwiches, they're going to, like, catch me up now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I mean, the basic rundown of this is you've got your good guys and your bad guys. Babyface would be your uh, good guy. Very much a case of uh, just being the hero protagonist. You can... Get yeah, anti-hero style baby faces where it's someone like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Tweeners. Hmm? Tweeners. Uh, yeah, oh, I'd say the tweeners. One term at a time. <laughs> I beg you. But, like, basically, your good guy tends not to really have a personality most of the time. The They're just baby nice. Face. John Cena. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Exactly. And, <laughs> um, you know, like, gimmick, um, basically, like, it's just a, a basically, it's like a, um, what would you call it, like a, a shortcut to just say, like, well, what's the, char main, the main character chain? So, the, the motivations for what they're going to do, yeah. who they are as people, shortcuts, wrestling, the reason why a lot of things that can be described as like racist or <laughs> everything else that you could use is because wrestling takes a lot of shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> for a while, yeah. ter like terrorism is a big thing in wrestling for a while. Yeah. Okay, you're not leaving that point. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was um, I mean, many times. Where, 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 where do we want to jump in? Anyone want to want to jump in? Uh, What's their favorite terrorist angle? Muhammad uh, Hassan. Muhammad Hassan. Hassan. Everyone's favorite terrorist angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a T-shirt. <laughs> Guys, am I going on a watch list? What is this? <laughs> All right. So Muhammad Hassan. Uh, it was actually played by an Italian guy. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, by a non-Arab, non-Muslim Italian guy. And uh, yeah, basically this was in 2005 before the London bombing happened. Yeah. Yeah. And it was during Jingoistic in America, so it was like, oh hey, he's gonna come in, he's feuding with The Undertaker, and literally, I kid you not, there was an angle shot where they where four guys in, you know, it's the ISIS costume. Like a scene. A scene, yeah, sorry. Angle is <laughs> a scene. Where like, these like, ISIS kind of guys jumped in and kidnapped The Undertaker, who's an evil space, who's, who's an evil space wizard. Um, <laughs> Uh, they actually attacked him and carried him off to, you know, his, his doom. Literally, the London 7-7 bomb, bombings happened that day and he had to pull the angle. We yeah. never saw from Muhammad Hassan again. Yeah, he's never seen or heard of again. Yeah. I, I think have he, to I, go now. Might let it need to be. I think he did some <laughs> Hulk Hogan and that was it. Correct? Yeah, yeah, that, was, that, that was backlash. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm was, sorry. Yeah. He lost the season for that as well. A terrorist kidnapped someone to their spaceship. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> no, no, he never returned. This back happened to in the ring. This or? happened in the ring. Yeah. This, this was, this was, the, this the was kidnapping the... happened in the ring. Yeah. This is also he did it against a character who also, by the way, can summon lightning. Who never does it whenever he's actually in a match. <laughs> it just happens before, before a match. Or, or after a match, he will summon lightning. But not during the match yeah. when you think you'd want to. <laughs> That, that would be very unfair. <laughs> yes. All right. So some so, so some terms that you guys wanted to kind of touch on, right? Kayfabe I mean, it comes from Pig Latin. We think these are all currently terms. You don't really know. Called keep a fake, right? So that's for you, Kayfabe. Angle we talked about. He is, you know, there's two. There, but we're just going all all over the shop now. Yeah. Heat, heat <laughs> is basically like, you know, a reaction. So there's good heat, bad heat, and then there's extra heat, which is go away. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So uh, next slide. I mean, next slide. Is going uh, going over. And uh, the idea is like, if someone's going over it's because they're they're uh, winning the match, they're successful. Yeah. Um, although it's considered to be their the winner's duty to allow the loser to get over. This is basically their opportunity to become popular through the losing. match or losing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next slide there. So Mark is. Uh, a really fine name. It's also what uh, con artists have used forever to call someone who is uh, who's uh, stupid enough to give them money. It's exactly. also carnies. So <laughs> yeah, it's like have you ever seen an episode of Simpsons where um, they're going into the carnival? Yeah. They join the carnival, yeah. 
and then Homer is the, the first was pigeon. Yeah, pigeon. Yeah. So pigeon the same as American. That's the kind of same term. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too late to have an everything is Simpsons references. <laughs> They're actually, believe it or not, very related. We might do that next year. No. What was that, sir? No. No. And then, okay. So the obverse to that would be smart. So a smart mark. So somebody who still buys into wrestling is, you know. You know, like that guy, it's still real to me, damn it, he would be a smart. So, and yeah. He knows it's fake, and he still buys he he still, still into it. He still gives them her, their money. Myself so, and Bryn are smarts. Yeah. We're wearing Bullet Club shirts. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like, it's Two speed is effort. Exactly, yeah. two speed, yeah. And then, like, then in terms of selling, this is actually something that even happens, as far as I can recall, happens with actors as well, where, like, the idea of... It's like the reaction to something, into a physical thing that may not actually be real. Yeah, yeah. that's a, it's a fight choreography thing. Yeah. The person throwing the punch doesn't sell it, it's the person reacting to it. Yeah. 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 So we saw we saw overselling there in the er, in the promo video where Batista wasn't hit, yeah. but he sold it like he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's overselling, that's bad. Yeah. Um, well, it can, it can be really entertaining. There's a great... Uh, HBK on the Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that, 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 that people match. haven't seen it, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. It's basically like uh, watching overacting, oh, yes. but for wrestling, yeah. it's amazing. 2005 <laughs> SummerSlam. Actually, SummerSlam's on tonight as well, so we're kind of... Yeah. Yeah. See, everything is wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a shoe is where a work, which is also the normal term in there, but work is like a fake fight, right? So every match is work, as in they've gone through the spots, or you know, they're not going to win, or not going to A shoe is, we're actually fighting, <laughs> or we're trying to punch or something that wasn't meant to happen. A work shoe, or the Vince Russo special. <laughs> Vince Russo was a booker. Uh, it was kind of like being the writer or showrunner. Yeah. And, uh, hang yeah. on, hang on. Wrestling has a showrunner? Yeah, the booker. Exactly. The booker yeah. man. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like you need someone who, uh, the way it worked was like uh, the booker was kind of, would have also won the same as being the person who promotes the shows overall back, way back when. And when it came to, um, and when it came to like putting together a show, they booked people and put the ball. Well, you're booked for the main event. You're booked to open the show. And you're, you know, exactly. that's kind of like the idea behind where they'd have basically come up with a running order. Yeah. For so whatever was coming through. so, you, so the, the way it worked is you'd have your writers who would tell a storyline, right? And the way they do it, instead of going out and shooting scenes, you'd have matches. So the matches would be booked to progress the storyline, and the angles would be used as kind of like key ten poles throughout, throughout the whole thing. And that's basically what it is. And, uh, you know, that's what I would give to be a fly on the wall on the writing sessions for wrestling. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, no, like, you I wouldn't. want to see people no, with, like, with cigarettes and shirts throwing things on whiteboards. Like, throwing, <laughs> you know, those things. That's, that's called, those that's called, scraps of paper. That's called TNA from 2004. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there. <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. God. Um, so yeah, in terms of like yeah, work shoot is basically where they want you to make make you think that something's actually happening when it's not. Because yeah. it's um, yeah. So basically, it's it's when they they use your suspension of disbelief to work in real concepts, or they use like you're like oh, I never see that in wrestling. It's like Deadpool, right? Deadpool's famous for what? What does he do? Break the fourth wall. Breaks the fourth wall. Fort wall. What's the fourth wall? But also swearing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what's the fourth wall? Speaking to the audience. Exactly. Right. So, us speaking to you is breaking the fourth wall of us doing a podcast, right? So that's what I mean. Like Deadpool, that's his whole gimmick, right? So why that sticks out is because nobody does that. A work shoot has the same, the same kind of reaction to it. The lads in the ring or girls in the ring, they know that it's fake because they're obviously doing it, but they're buying it in such a way that, to them, it's real. But if they were to look at the camera and go, hey guys, what's up, you know, <laughs> that'd be breaking the fourth wall. So that's what a work shoot is. So the most famous one recently was CM Punk, obviously yeah, cutting the yeah, promo. Like 2011. Yeah, and he came out and he was like, hey, look, I'm leaving. I'm very unhappy about the way things are here, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to play the whole thing. Look it up. It's great. Yep. Yeah. Another one was um, wrestling commentator Joey Styles. He came out and could have, and there was an angle where Vince McMahon was feeling against Shawn Michaels, the wrestler called Shawn Michaels, and God, <laughs> literally, literally, like the Lord above, that's who he was feuding with. Right? And Joey Styles could have promo saying, look, this is terrible, I can't believe that they're booking against God, you know, and you watch it. So yeah, that, they're work shoots, as in like they're written, but they play on things that are actually real. Like Deadpool's a film, yeah. but he's still... So was was God there the same day as the terrorist spaceship? No, this was this was like a year later. <laughs> a year later, it was a so wild time. 
<laughs> Wild time. Yeah. Terrorist versus God. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I need to heal here, you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I think here would be a good point to go. So, do you have any other topics that you have prepared? I mean, I thought I thought these were weird until you brought in the <laughs> terrorist God space oh. aliens. Who this is why wrestling can be the best show on television because so. it's so weird. I've had a few weeks to try and think of ones that will flummox them. I'm after how the weird wrestling is. I'm not sure if I can anymore, but I will certainly try. Okay, me and my girlfriend love Winnie the Pooh. It's one of our favorite things in the world. How is Winnie the Pooh related to wrestling? Okay, so <laughs> um, this is already going better than I expected. <laughs> Any ideas on how you want to set that? Oh yeah, for sure, right? So you have a crowd of a motley crew of, uh, of characters led by a figurehead. So we can either do two things and they go on adventures or they achieve tasks. So we can either do the job squad, which were a group of jobbers. Jobber is someone who loses all the time and that's their gimmick. Um, or not a gimmick, but it was a gimmick in the 90s because everything was a gimmick in the 90s, right? Um, but yeah, and then they're led obviously by Mick Foley. So Christopher Robin would be Mick Foley, <laughs> and he's leading, he's leading this motley crew of cast members through their adventures and then overcoming. Tigger's off as Al Snow. Exactly, Tigger's uh, off Snow. Yeah. Al Snow is great, by the way. He wrestled against himself. <laughs> it was a fantastic match. He put himself to a table. It was great. Yes, sir. Who, who would be Eeyore? That, I was going to get to that actually. I would say see, Blue Meanie. Yeah, Blue oh, Meanie or Stevie Richards. Yeah. <laughs> or both. No, see, you have to be a member of the same group, but, you know, Rabbit does kind of provide some of the foil, so yeah, Vince McMahon would be a good one. Yeah, right. It's fun. On. So there you go. I hope that answers question. I was going to go with the Ministry, but that's who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, sticking with the Disney theme, there are lots of live-action remakes of Disney classics. How are live-action remakes related to wrestling? Uh, can I take this one? Yes, yeah, absolutely. You see Hardcore Justice. <laughs> you see Hardcore Justice the, when, when they re I'm... Okay. I don't have a buzzer. Uh, <laughs> what is Hardcore Justice? So, <laughs> TNA, which, is a, uh, which was, the, was, was the number two wrestling promotion next to... Literally by existing, right? Yeah. Next to WWE. And they decided to take an angle, ECW, Ten years later, so you had guys. Let's go through those um, acronyms. I will now in a second. <laughs> so ten years later, so ECW was an extreme wrestling promotion right back in the nineties and the end of two thousand and one, and they took their uh, they were known for doing hardcore spots and all those kind of stuff. Spots is a, is a move or a big move. I'm sorry, by the way, guys, get thinking because I'm running away with these quickly. I'm going to tag you in. Okay? Yeah. Start thinking Fair now. Wrestling. Now. Fair wrestling, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, Let's go for the hot sorry, sorry, Mr. Answer, so basically, um, you know, what's a remake? A remake is taking an old concept and trying to gussy it up. This is the crippling example of doing something terribly wrong. And Hardcore Justice was a pay per view done where they took these wrestlers who are broken down, like really broken down, and, <laughs> and they just had hardcore matches. So they had guys bleeding on each other and, you know, weird blue lights and stuff. And that's how most remakes turn out Fantastic Four or Fantastic Four Stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forstick? Forstick. Does anyone know how that's actually supposed to be said? <laughs> well, here, from Forstick. Yes. But here's the thing about remakes, right? That's Hollywood remakes, and I think all the Hollywood remakes are terrible for Disney movies. Remakes in general, if you go back further, because every 15 years of wrestling, uh, wrestling angles um, recycled or reused. Why? Because people age out. People start watching wrestling when they're eight or five or six, and then they become lifelong wrestling fans, but by the time they're 15, 16, they either they stop watching, or their little brother's watching, or their little sister's watching, or their cousin's watching, so they can reuse the angles again. That's why we saw John Cena being, John Cena was literally Hulk Hogan 20 years later. Yeah. Oh, so there's like a life cycle for... Exactly, everything gets recycled over and over again, so remakes is a very wrestling thing as well. Okay, well, uh, we have... Let's bring up the next one. We okay. have, well, I'm going to do one more question and pass it over to the audience. We have a televised version of Neil Gaiman's Sandman coming up soon. So, I want to throw this over to you. How easy, is easy the story of Neil Gaiman's Sandman related to wrestling? Oh, That's easy. Literally, you give him the easiest one. I have to do fucking Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> 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 Sing the Undertaker. Hmm? Sing the Undertaker. Literally. 
see if you want to uh, Staying in the clarify room? for the beginner here. Okay, so actually, Fee, Fee bring the premise of yeah. Salman real quick. Okay, it is the first book at least. Mm -hmm. is about the god of dreams being kidnapped by humans and escaping to reclaim all of his lost possessions and rebuilding his kingdom. Yeah, that's just The Undertaker. Yeah, that's literally just The Undertaker. Literally. <laughs> like, ah. the, Under the Undertaker is like an undead wizard. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Who wait, wrestles wait. for so We long. have wizards <laughs> now? Yes. <laughs> Again, he's a biker as well. He was a biker. He was a biker. I was off. He had a biker with conscience yeah. after, after ten years of terror. And becoming a satanic priest. Yes. yes. And an old West mortician. A uh, mortician. He's Eric Bell as a mortician. By he is a wizard motorcyclist mortician. <laughs> by the way, that uh, motorcycle undertaker gimmick was, by the way, dead man in court. <laughs> he's not wrong. So no, he's no, no, what, no, is he no, dead no. too? What? Yeah, he's dead. He's, he's, he's a dead man. How does he find time to wrestle? <laughs> I don't know. He's an undead wizard who does all these extra curricular and in real life, you know, in, in a sheet, in a sheet life, which is <laughs> uh, he's, he has a big property portfolio. Yeah. Oh, 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 he works in real estate. <laughs> he works in real estate. <laughs> he does now, yeah. There's only seven days in the week for yeah. the undead wizards. So what? <laughs> Lightning out of your hands and not use it. But only when people aren't looking. Yeah. You can right. do whatever you want. Basically. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I mean, he, uh, his source of powers came from an urn. You know, like he had he had a person who who helped him in matches called Paul Bearer. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to need a minute. To my Does anyone have any ideas that might flummox these guys? Any ideas on something life. in the whole universe that's not related to wrestling? Any hands up? Any hands up there? Oh, uh, we have uh, yeah. a hand up over there. Go on, try and flummox them. I've been trying this for weeks. <laughs> okay. How is 80s Japanese pop music uh, wrestling? Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> You do it, I do it. Just let me bask so, like, in these five okay. seconds. <laughs> For, um... Okay, I've never really... I've, the closest thing to Japanese pop music I've ever really listened to has been mainly for um theme songs for anime. So, is that a, is that a good indication of what it sounds like, or...? I guess it depends on the anime. Sure. Mm. Mm. Am I the winner here? No, 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 no. You should have brought a prize. I cannot remember his name. <laughs> Wrestler uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. Oh, Shinsuke wow. Nakamura's gimmick is literally that. <laughs> his gimmick is literally that. He's, he's his whole dress is like Prince. He dresses like Michael Jackson, dude. <laughs> the Japanese Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's his gimmick. You know, that's how he sells himself. His promos, the all kind of. I can't remember. I was wanting to call him Kenta for a moment, but like that's not right. Yeah. Um, There's a Japanese Michael Jackson in wrestling. Yeah, and he's <laughs> fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah he dresses so, yeah. like Michael Jackson, and he has a presence like Prince. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, basically, and this is his WWE run. This is his run in New Japan. Yeah. Um, basically, that was he started off as a really boring kind of you know weighty, generic uh, pro wrestler. And then he started kicking the head off lads and he didn't get over. So he actually took that gimmick and worked it into himself. And it's less 80s pop music, but he did kind of take... I know what, 1980... When did Triller come out? 83. 83, so yeah, it is 80. Yeah. Not yeah. Japanese, but he is Japanese, so close enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that really great one. Well, well done, well done. Well, so give a round of applause. Yeah. I should have bought some P&A DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's the bar to beat. Anyone else? Hands up, hands up. Go on, okay, I've got, I've got two. Is oh, hang on, what's your name there, sir, before we start? Uh, Ian. Ian, lovely to meet you. Go on there, sir. Uh, I've got two. I'll give one to Dara and one to Brim. Cool. Okay, so start with Dara. Dara. How does heavy metal relate to wrestling? Oh, that's an easy one. That's a good one. Should we just play the game theme song? Yeah, I yeah. Got so, good. so, yeah, like, wrestling and heavy metal have always been, like, in sync with your, uh, even, you know, music in general. The Rock and Roll Express, that was a big thing in the 80s. And, rock and uh, Wrestling. Rock and Wrestling, yeah. But that was literally a Saturday morning cartoon. Yep. Yeah. So, in the 90s, when wrestling got more aggressive, we had, uh, you know, heavy metal coming in. Like, I remember my first time ever hearing Fear Factory, Bam Fear Factory, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Was in my favourite promo of all time. Was for Unforgiven 1999. Who's seen it? Who's seen Unforgiven 1999? Yes. You know, who's seen it not on the network? <laughs> yeah, Spider Man so, has. Yeah, so basically, that they ruined it on the network by removing the music, but they had an awesome playlist where they told the story of Triple H against Vince McMahon, Triple H, best wrestler of all time. Don't care. <laughs> uh, 
where they fought, uh, where he was uh, fighting against Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon was, you know, trying to basically beat Triple H. And he had the entire story told to Fear Factory's obsolete album, and it was unreal. And the end for the six-pack challenge was uh, Sugar by System of Down. Heavy Metal is so entrenched at wrestling that it's hard to imagine one way or the other. Modern day wrestling, the huge problem in WWE. Watch one of the video packages where they play some R&B garbage. Doesn't work. Yeah. Put a metal track on it, it's unreal. <laughs> now, I believe, Ian, you had a second question, did you? Or did you sub Mike? Or? Uh, yeah, just or a second. second. I'll give this one to Brim, actually. Just to point out one thing, you could have also said before, like, black metal probably got to Europe, that um, demolition was a sign of black metal in wrestling. Well, actually, Alistair Black refers to himself as literally the black metal of wrestling. Mm. So, okay, Brim, I just bought this one because I was inside this cool dude here. Sure. How does the room relate to wrestling? <laughs> okay. So, Wait, did you toss a football around? Is yeah. there something there? So, with and a baby. <laughs> so, the, the, what happens when you get something like the room is where you get a very passionate but very, very incompetent person <laughs> making a <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not your fault, you're not actually Tommy. So We think. Um, <laughs> be honest with you, that could be like Yeah. Like, could actually be. <laughs> <laughs> but um basically like the, you only get that from having someone very passionate but not confident at all in what they're doing. And somehow they get a ton of money together and manage to make that film. And that's Basically, what happened with uh, with Tom nonstop, uh, nonstop action, where when it started off, it just had a small bit of money, and then it got uh, and then it, had, it got bought by Panda Energy, who are uh, who had loads of money, who had like all oh, too much those money. Pandas. Yeah. <laughs> well, unless they were boiling down the pandas. Yeah, no, they were just oil company. Yeah, they were just an oil company, and they had so much money, and they put out, I would say, consistently for about six years. The worst wrestling ever seen. <laughs> they tried it though. They tried it. But I need, I, need to, I need to get my bias. I actually worked for TNA for a while in the PR department. That's why I want to do a book eventually though. So it's okay. But I always say everyone there is super nice. But yeah, they had no clue what they were doing. No clue what they were doing. And basically they were run by Dixie Carter, who, while she's a lovely lady, Holy, there, yes. holy, <laughs> holy Christ, that woman knew nothing about wrestling, <laughs> so you could see it, and this is when we got some terrible, we got, well, we got like, everything on a pole match, yeah. reverse battle royales, battle royales, you yeah. start reverse steel like, cage matches, electrified steel cage matches, are they Woo! outside the cage? Yeah. Yeah. In the reverse steel cage match, the way to win was to be the first one who got into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> well that's just a foot race. <laughs> <laughs> you would think so. <laughs> um, yeah, oh. And they, at every point in time, they were like t trying to make the best thing that they could, but failing at every single yeah. hurdle. And like even when they did something good, they'd get, they would kind of do, they'd pull a Game of Thrones on it, where it would be like really, really enjoyable, right up until just about the end. And can we just, kind of before going, you go on, can awful. we make that a pulling a Game of Thrones? Is that the new, like, pulling a Homer? Is that I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're doing such a good job, right up until the last bit, and then it just fails. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Ian. Those were very good suggestions. Do we have another hand in the air? What's your name there, sir? Uh, Simon. Hi, Simon. Nice Simon. to meet you. What have you got for us? So, let's just... How would you adapt, say, the Old Testament <laughs> into wrestling? So, <laughs> Old Old Testament. Which part? <laughs> just <laughs> any... Just pick whatever, like, <laughs> if you like, we could do that. Yeah, like, like, which, 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 book, which book from the Old Testament specifically? Revelation. Which one? Uh, Revelation. Just, Revelation's, Revelation's the New yeah. Testament. Oh, yeah. let's, let's just go for like, yeah, let's just go for Moses. Like, yeah. Moses, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah because I'm just like, oh man, that's okay. great, that's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. what did Moses wrestle the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Mo Moses, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. <laughs> you had the king of. Egypt, right? Well, okay, sorry, there's no story about no story Moses, but we're going to recap it. Moses was, uh, the, you know, the, uh, born as a slave, then adopted into the royal family. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh no, I will get to it. And then he, uh, he ended up leading the Jews out of Egypt and all that good stuff, right? So, Stone Cold Steve Austin was a no-name wrestler, right? And then he became um, the standout figure in 1996. So came from nothing, right? Just like Moses, and then he fought the highest power they could, Vince McMahon, who was just you know effectively God, effectively for God for wrestling, 
and he did it successfully. He took his own little followers out as well. He had like a little crew that he, you know, interfered matches with and all that kind of good stuff. And then, yeah, so you can do it. And Stone Cold did do it. Yeah. But Moses didn't fight God. <laughs> well, but he did fight the Pharaoh. He did. He did. He didn't struggle against them, I suppose. And he did fight against the Egyptian gods, apparently. Yeah. As well. So yeah. Oh, if you get Egyptian gods into wrestling, I will watch it. In that's happened. Yeah. Dude, that's happened. Yeah. There's kaiju wrestling. That can be done. Yeah. Well, we can just we can just look and open up a Chikara card. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a really good one. Thank you. We've got a hand up way away in the back there. I had to say because it was Sunday, you know. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you know what, I didn't expect yeah, yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. about the, the Old Testament. The day of our lives right. called Steve Austin. I've uh, got two, one for fun and one as a tough one. Ooh, <laughs> ooh I like it. Go on, give them a go. The fun one is Pokemon Go. <laughs> How is Pokemon Go like wrestling, guys? Well, Pokemon Go is basically a journey into the unknown, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you start off your day, you're playing Pokemon Go, you don't really know how it's going to go. GTV. And then suddenly a chair hits you? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on. I'm, I'm sorry, don't mean to tease. Finish the analogy. So, yeah, like, you can... Actually, no, sorry. The Hardcore Division. <laughs> the 24-7 Hardcore Division. So, in... 2000. We could use the modern day 24 7. We could, title. yeah, okay, we'll do, we'll do both. So in 2000, 2001, the hardcore title, which was literally a world title that they smashed up and you could beat anybody anytime, it became a 24 hour match where if there was a referee in place, you could challenge for the belt. So yeah. if I had it now, Brain could attack me or anyone you people could attack me and then pin me for a belt and then that would do it. Yes, sir. Oh, hang on, actually, uh, Amy, Amy, sorry, I'm giving away my bias there. You had a second question, did you? A difficult no, 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 we're not, we're not done, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not, not done. Yet. No, we're not done, no, no. Oh, there's more, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so, how it relates to wrestling is, Pokemon Go, you never know what you're going to catch, right? You never know what's going to happen. You never know what the next encounter is. Exactly, you're just walking down the road. It's like being the hardcore champion or the current day 24-7 champion where you can go into the back room and someone hits you with a chair and yeah. pins you and then walks away. Yeah. It's just like catching, you know, you run into a bulbasaur. Yeah. Or, just like, or oh having a God, battle a bulbasaur, this is cool. Mm. Sorry, what? Just ha or having a battle occur at the moment. Exactly. 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 Time. exactly. So there you go. Hope that answers quick. Before we go on to your second question, in wrestling, do people just jump out at you in the bathroom in day-to-day -day life? If you're, if you're in the 24 division, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there was a wedding... <laughs> the this happened like two weeks ago where Drake Ma a wrestler called Drake Ma Maverick was getting married yeah. basically and it was just the, the, they, had, they had ideas for how they wanted to live their lives versus how things were and I mean there's too many things to fit into that, <laughs> into that framework because um, like I mean you could go you could go with uh, in, in Japan there's this uh, faction bullet club they, uh, they, were, they were a bunch of European, uh, European Pacific Islanders and American wrestlers who were told, you're in Japan now. You, you, have, can't, to be, you have to be respectful. You have to be respectful. You have to do things the way that we do it. And they went, no. no. <laughs> and, we're American. And basically, <laughs> we're going to do whatever we want. Forced, yeah, that way. forced uh, the, the qualities of wrestling that they were trained to do onto the Japanese wrestlers yeah. and they uh, became massive villains because of it and became massively popular. Basically the way basically the way the Japanese wrestling works is all the baby faces are usually traditional Japanese guys. Any Westerners can get over being super heels because of the Westerners. Yeah. And that's how it works. <laughs> yeah basically these guys are like, yeah we're just gonna go and we're gonna do everything differently. Mm -hmm. They refused to speak in Japanese as well, which yeah. is also a massive yeah. no no at one point. Now it's fine apparently. <laughs> but yeah, also to add to that, I would say the the authority angle. Yep. So that was so sorry. The authority angle has been Triple H, best wrestler of all time, King Kings. Um, <laughs> he uh, he was um, basically Kent Kent Power. He was playing the Vince McMahon angle a couple of years ago, and uh, he went through the whole roster saying, "This is how it's going to be. This is how we're going to organize it," and you know would nominate champions to go through a fight for it. So you know it. it you constantly have that dynamic where there is that push against authority or against authority figures, and depending on how you react to that, it's one of the most common themes. Exactly, it is. Yeah, like so, authoritarian. So common, in fact, that when it's not there, it's different. So now it's a bit more like commissioners in wrestling were worth thing, and there were just guys who came out every now and then and meant something. Now, if the authority figure doesn't come out, it's kind of weird. So it's it's a trope that's been played out, really. 
Would you consider Jane Austen to be an influential figure in wrestling then, by that extent? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, who's next there? What's your name there? John. <coughs> Hi, Sean. What's, uh, what's your idea? John. John. Oh, John. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, go on there. How would, how would you work doc, Doctor Who into the rest of them? Yeah. Oh, oh, we okay. talked about this earlier on. Uh, yeah. Considering we have not one, not two, but three doctors and a TARDIS <laughs> in the room. <laughs> so, I am very interested to hear this, guys. Go on. <laughs> Ooh, oh, so so dumb. Right at the last minute, yeah. we've got a tricky one. Well done. Um, oh, man. So, like... The challenge, the, one of the challenges with this is that I haven't really seen that much Doctor Who. So okay, now I want the wrestling boo. Three, two, one. Ooh. Okay, how about this? Okay, all right. I will feed. You, I will feed you basically. So Doctor Who is an interdimensional time lord uh -huh. who has adventures with companions. Yeah. yeah. Right there. So that phase, that, yeah, and then he kind of regenerates under that. Let's just take the first part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. So he's just an interdimensional. Yeah. And you can travel Time anywhere. Lord. Time Lord. Yeah. And what does this have to do with wrestling? <laughs> How has it been with that? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think if you, again, it would be very much a case of like, it's just, it would be taking the, actually, hang on a second. Didn't Jakara do a time travel? They did. That's what yeah, I told Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. So there was a... Excuse me, there's a time traveling wrestler, is there? In Jakara, there is. They did, yeah, they did uh, time travel. Well, that's they, a distinct advantage, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So look, Takara is also the same place where there is a match between a broom and a mattress. Yes. <laughs> and a ladder and a mattress. Yeah. And ma I think the mattress won a title. Like, are we talking like that a bed was, that was style? Though. Like, how does this work? <laughs> the, no, like, I mean, Takara is, um, uh, is, a, is a sort of small wrestling company that has uh, that's made a name for itself by um, really trying, like, really uh, going quite hard into doing things, uh, doing sci-fi and um, uh, doing sci-fi tropes in wrestling, um, they've had they they had they had a heel faction of giant ants uh, take over <laughs> take over take over the company. Yeah. I can and, stop you right there. We watched the Doctor Who the other day where he fought ants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We are on our last. Sorry, you can't finish on that. Sorry. But there's, I mean, for Jakara, it's kind of like a catch-all for a lot of those kind of things because yeah. they've done time they've done time travel. They, what they did for it was. They'd actually take they'd taken a year out and filmed almost the entire year of it, and then they went back. They went back and started doing things live again, and they went, "We've got to go back in time." And that was what everything. And when you know something like that, mm. the wizard did it. Yeah. <laughs> so were the ants live too? I mean, there were people in ant costumes, but oh, you would now say that they were ants. the suspension of disbelief is. Yeah. Well, that's another doctor mentioned right there. We are running out of time, unfortunately. Who has questions that or ideas? Spider-Man, you have been a big contributor to this whole evening, so I'm glad that you've got a chance. What's your name there, or do you want to keep your identity secret? I'd rather keep that secret, thank you. Uh, okay. Just put your mask back on, then. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Go on there, Junior Avenger. What's your idea? Uh, well, of course, Paul Heyman being my favorite manager in WWE at the minute. In the past, I've referenced him to Ren and Stimpy. The reason being, Ren, you can give kick-ass lines, although making the crowd laugh, which we've seen on Monday Night Raw when Paul Heyman came out with Brock Lesnar in the past. I was wondering, who would you reference Paul Heyman to? Ooh. Do you want to go for the uh, I'm yes. gonna let these two guys go first. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Paul Heyman is like the evil genius of wrestling. That's where he's known as, you know, the, the in the in the shoot, right? Oh, it's having to work. But he, it's where you want to, t which kind of angle you want to take him as, right? So you mentioned currently, right? So I'm just gonna take him as the advocate, Brock Lesnar, mm. right? So I would, yeah, I would say he's the ar that kind of archetypical, you know, our kids here. Yes, yes, my, no. my okay. four month old. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That's the first word you're told. <laughs> so, the, 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 and so, six year old as well, there, yeah. Chicken ass heel, you know, where he, he goes off and he, and he hits these, uh, you know, he cuts a cuts promo and then going to say whatever he wants because he knows he has Brock Lesnar has his back, right? So, any, any name a character like that, you know, Loki in the Avengers, right? He's kind of, you know, talking all of this character talk because, you know, he had the backing of 
Um, he always seems to have the backing of the, of the bad guys, you know, he had Thanos on his backing at one point. So yeah, that's where I was very much, and he kind of, he plays that stereotypical archetype of an amazing idea man who has the muscle to back it up. You made a really good point, actually, because I saw Loki come out of Comic-Con once in costume. Tom exactly, Cruise, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way he worked the crowd and hyped up in his cape with the horns, like, it was like yeah. a wrestling match. Like, yeah. did you ever and see that before Thor Ragnarok? And that's he came what, out and he's like, I have an army and all that. And that's what Brock Lesnar, that's, that's what uh, Paul Heyman is. Paul Heyman is the ultimate hype man. Yeah. You know, I, literally, sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but anyone who comes out, you know, for anyone who doesn't watch wrestling, all the promos are, he's like, I am the advocate of Brock Lesnar. He is the first person you see before Brock Lesnar comes out and kills people. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, there's there's killing in wrestling? Well, way, not too literally. way too much. Well, well, well actually, well, Lucha Underground, there was killing. There was killing in Lucha Underground. <laughs> and Vince Man was blown up one time. Yes. Um, <laughs> But wait, wait, no, one time. There's no one time <laughs> with getting blown up. No, if happened. you get blown yeah, up one happened. time, you're blown up. <laughs> Not in wrestling. Or comic books. You always come back. Um, so the one thing I was thinking of there was, uh, like, it can, it taking the modern version of Paul Heyman with, um, and taking the modern version of Paul Heyman with uh, Brock Lesnar, it's kind of like, Watching the monsters and their monster <laughs> and their uh, their manager from um, uh, from Space Jam, oh, and imagining no. if the monsters actually played NBA and just destroyed everyone. That's better. Yeah, that's better. That's basically like like Brock Lesnar is basically all the monsters just put into one body, and that's kind of who he is. Yeah, uh, he's a frightening man, um, and I think. Five we are five nearly minutes. out of time. So before we wrap up, uh, is there anything else you guys want to show us, or will we? Just... There was one last. Uh, do we have time for it? We do. There, does anyone? We'll have one more. We'll fill one more. Okay. Hold on. Who, who, has, uh, who, 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 who hasn't? Who hasn't question. had a go yet? Uh, okay. Over so oh, with, with the with the immaculate yeah. beard there. That's <laughs> quite a beard. Yes. Physical beard, all right. Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man, Dungeons and Dragons two, is two hearts to basically a team. Hearts. But it's not too hard though. No, it's not. Like so, like the, there's a lot of ways you can look at Dungeons and Dragons, right? But um, when it comes to the way that wrestling works, you're still inventing a character. You're still basically going, well, I want to be a certain, I want to have a certain fighting style. I, could I be a luchador where I'm all like agile, like a rogue? Could I be more of a powerhouse where you're basically. Um, uh, you're basically like a barbarian or like just a standard warrior or whatever. Th uh, like again, there's like technicians where you're like uh, there's technicians or uh, yeah, like the thing that I would say like charismatic, like a bard. Like there's any class you can think of in D and D, you could cross that over to wrestling quite easily. With, with characters, but if you actually wanted to see a play out in real time, there's a show called there was a show called Tough Enough, and literally that was a, sh a reality show about uh, training wrestlers coming up characters. So they were kind of setting themselves up for a career in wrestling. And yeah, as Brent said, barbarians, strong guys, strikers, submission artists, technicians, you know, all of forward, so yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's too complex. We could do a whole panel on D&D &D and wrestling, you know, so. I'm up for that. Like that purple check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so while we fight the machine, uh, <laughs> let's, oh, is it all ready? Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, so what is this you're showing us, guys? So this is just like the last thing, this kind of puts through most of what we're doing. Lovely. Wrestling is mythology. Wrestling is action. Wrestling is comic books. The only thing wrestling isn't is wrestling. So thank you for not mentioning it. <laughs> yes, thanks, guys. <laughs> Excellent. So, thank you so much. Now, before we wrap up... Uh, Guys, want to give a shout out to where you can find us? We do a uh, podcast every single week, along with lots of other cool stuff. Uh, guys, if you like this and want to hear some more, or even get involved, guys, where can they find us? Basically, Nerd to Know Media is where you can go. So we're gonna have cards. So if you guys want cards, come up and get them. Uh, we'll finish up. But there's no excuse not to find us. Nerd to Know Media, everything, Spotify. Gmail, YouTube, Twitch, Carrier Pigeon. Uh, exactly. You know, Wrestling Carrier Pigeon. Wrestling Carrier Pigeon. <laughs> Everything. So if you, if you like what we do, you can get us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good stuff as well. So we do a podcast every week, Nerd to Know Basis, and then we do a winter show. Yeah, and we don't just cover wrestling. We cover all the new the nerd news as it comes out. We've got ones on video games, on Marvel. We did a retrospective on Spider-Man recently. Like, uh, what other kind of stuff do we cover? Uh, Star Wars fan theory. Star Wars fan theory. Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, I wish we had time to go into your fan theory. You're going to have to check it out on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And best of all, because we're on every platform, if you guys want us to talk about anything, or even just 
want to hear a voice mentioned or anything in the show or get a shout out, hit us up. We're very easy to approach. And thank you so much. Anything before we wrap up, guys? No, thanks very much for having me. Thank you so much. You have made this awesome. Thank you. Thank you, the people out there. You're all the stars. You're all the stars. Thank you so much, Jesus.